Secret Invasion Episode 6, the one where Fury didn't need to exist. You're just like your father. You could have removed Fury from this entire episode and nothing would have changed. Yes, well, let's be sure not to repeat the mistakes of Talos and Fury and leave love and friendship out of this. In fact, this episode got 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. And that makes it not only the worst reviewed episode of the entire series, but the lowest rated MCU episode ever. And that's a good thing, because I made an entire video about how bad this episode would be, and it's worse. I don't think anybody, no matter how cynical, was prepared for this. And you find out that the finale wasn't actually about reconciling with Gravik, as the director said it was, because Fury never even meets Gravik in the entire final episode. Instead, this entire episode and series was about one thing. Replacing Fury with two strong, independent Type Bs who have mastered the power of fallopian tubes. Let's get stuck in. We start with Fury's wife leaving her old home. Which is weird considering the last episode she said this. When it comes to facing down my executioners, I'd rather meet them standing right here. Yeah, she was more than willing to stand there and fight right until she had to fight. And then realised that was a really stupid idea and should actually probably just leave anyway. I don't know what changed her mind. Maybe she'd watched one of my reviews in the meantime and realised what a stupid idea it was. It's afraid. It's afraid! But she gets a phone call. It's Fury in a dark, dark alley. I have dialed this number a million times. This is just the first time I press send. You would have thought Fury would have understood how a phone works before now. You can understand it though, because as we see later in the episode, unless a woman actually finishes the job, Fury doesn't really get much done. That's cold consolation. You're telling me, love. But she asks if he's coming back. He's like, oh, I'm really not sure. I should probably be going now. You're like, sorry, what? This entire scene makes it look like he's about to do something really dangerous. Plot twist, he isn't. Not only is Fury not about to do something dangerous, in this episode he doesn't really do anything at all. And I know why they did it, they're like, okay, we're trying to set up the audience to get the emotions ready for what's about to come in the episode. But at the end of it, you're like, why did this scene exist? He's phoning her as if he's about to die. But the greatest danger he faces throughout this entire episode will be the radiation that he receives from the phone call he's actually making right now. <laughs> Take care of yourself. I'm not sure why that bothered me. You're gonna see him again in 15 minutes. So he leaves her with her thinking she's never gonna see him again. Which seems really cruel when all he's gonna do is walk down a hospital corridor. <laughs> but she leaves, he leaves. And we suddenly teleport over to the power plant where there's guards waiting and there's a car approaching the gate. They try to stop it. They warn it by shooting in the air. And when it still doesn't stop, they just shoot the crap out of it. I'm still not sure why the car stops there. Because there's nobody in it. You can set up a car to charge at a gate by just putting a brick on one of the pedals. How do you get it to stop where you want it to though? That's the confusing question. Because it's just a distraction. As Fury shoots both of the guards in the face. Before entering the power plant. Ready to kick ass and take names. Oh, this is the old Fury. He's back on form. We're not randomly going to insult this guy for half the episode. We wouldn't dare. He's one of Marvel's main characters. We wouldn't destroy him just before he's about to appear in one of our movies, would we? Maybe it depends what we're setting up, eh? Over in the hospital now, the Skrull's still trying to destroy the world. We've got the female general preaching peace. As I've said, the show is very subtle. And even though he's a Skrull, he does kind of have a point. Vladimir has strenuously denied responsibility. Oh, he's strenuously denied it. Then I guess we're all right then. Or at least it would be if scrolls didn't exist not a single person in this entire room has gone should we just check to see if anybody's a scroll please maybe we should just take a blood sample you know make sure before we start taking advice from anybody everybody in this room knows that scrolls exist nobody cares did you take a stupid pill with your breakfast this morning admiral i wish that had been put in earlier in the series i have a feeling i would have gotten a lot of use out of that clip we got about him a long time he just keeps repeating i've got all the evidence i need i've got some bodies on a road isn't that enough to prove that a different nation did it. No. But the show is adamant that if you just basically repeat the same thing enough times, it must be true. Did you take a stupid pill with your breakfast this morning? At that moment, they get satellite imagery because a load of tanks have been pushed up to various different borders. Yeah, they're talking about preemptively attacking a nation, and then when that nation gets its defenses ready, they go, oh look, they're getting ready to defend themselves. We better attack them. Taking the liberty to hear a rough copy of your remarks to the nation. Even write a speech for him to put out. I watched out 
House of Cards, they have speech writers. Why is some random scroll writing it for you? The American people need to hear from you, sir. He is in a hospital bed right now, so are you sure? <laughs> but the scroll just keeps going, Ah, you've got to attack him! Ah! Bearing in mind, these shows are meant to be a little bit more complicated, a little bit deeper. You're supposed to have to think about it a lot more and not just have a guy go, Ah! attack him! Which is made all the more stupid when nobody checks to make sure he isn't a scroll. There's your proof right there. That's right, the proof that they have is a picture of a power plant. Quite frankly, I don't know how he isn't convinced. Do you want to start World War 3? Because I've got a picture of making electricity and we could avert an international disaster just by having a blood sample taken. Whoever wrote this genuinely has the IQ of a spoon. Make the call, Mr. President. I mean, when you say it like that, all I can think of is Marilyn Monroe. But we've left Dumb and Dumber to now go to another couple, which is worse. Fury's at the power plant and the radiation starts to get to him. He looks through the window and sees the aftermath of the fight he had last week, which is meant to show Oh, they're not all bad guys. You know, some of them wanted to follow his leadership and destroy the world for a little bit, but they changed their mind when he started to kill them as well. Do you think this genuinely makes the scrolls seem better? Despite the fact they only cared about killing 8 billion people when it started to affect them personally. So Fury's walking along, he's coughing, the radiation meter's going up. And he's even struggling to walk. And as he staggers along taking the iodine medication, seriously, you would have thought he would have taken it before he went into the power plant. I don't know if you know how biology works, but things stay in your system for a while after you've swallowed them. It's not like you eat a chicken and it just vanishes into the ether. But eventually, after watching him go through every single set that they've built for this entire area, look, it cost them 212 million. They definitely want to show it off. We cut over to Rhodes, who's getting a strange phone call. You have to get him out of there. Who? Who do you think? You're in a hospital room with one patient who leads your nation. Who do you think they're talking about? This is like Fury when he was on the train. Tell me something I don't know about the scrolls that fled. They're here. Who's here? The president, you idiot. Really is peep show all over again, isn't it? And he is literally in the same room with the guy. So did you take a stupid pill with your breakfast this morning? But she warns him, you've got to move him. Fury is coming for you. Why are we concerned about Fury? We got enough security for him. Yeah, he's old and useless and crap at everything. It's not as if he'd be effective even if he turned up. He doesn't even have the scrolls to do all the work for him now. Can't take credit for him. For what? Target practice? Fury's lost it. Yeah, people have been saying he's lost it the entire series. You know, his talent, his ability, his intellect. Maybe it'd be faster to say what he's retained because, uh, um, I can't think of anything. But while she's telling him to move him, it turns out she's in the hospital with a face like a slapped ass. Back now with Fury and showing you every single set from every angle, we finally end up in the transformation room. Fury's got a burrito he once warmed up, so he decided the radiation was worth it. I mean, at this point, he's just acting like a broken man. Sorry, I should be more specific. That's been the rest of the series. The radiation's clearly obliterated him. He can barely walk, he's coughing, and the other guy's just sizing up his incredibly weak opponents. Where is everybody? He went on strike, mate. Don't worry, give it a few years. We can populate this entire area with AI. <laughs> Locked away. Looks like it's just you and me, Fury. <laughs> Seriously, Fury is dying of radiation poisoning and you still managed to give him an upside? <laughs> Trap me in a room with you and anyone would wish for the sweet release of death. But Fury, for some reason, when he's trying to take his medication after already being exposed to the radiation, drops it and it all falls down a grid. All our pills. Mm. That's a shame, isn't it? It's only iodine, mate. I'm not sure why you're that bothered about it. I'm not sure why you did it so enthusiastically when you're a super scroll, you could just snap his neck at any point. No more protection for you. That's what she said. Although, as you're trying to cause the apocalypse, she probably has regrets about it now. And you're in Barbie. That's got to be humiliating for any scroll when you're reduced to this. Now, for some reason, Gravik gives him a drink. And you kind of think, well, he made a really big deal about that drink. Was there something in it that's going to affect the plot and the story later on? No. No, it, it, it was just a drink. So gritty. Back in the hospital now, Rhodes is panicking, moving the president. But don't worry, he's got a plan. Plan. Hey, we're moving the president upstairs. Yep, yeah, I mean, that's definitely safer. Is upstairs more secure? Is it more fortified? Or is it literally just another floor in the hospital? <laughs> I thought they were gonna move him to a bunker or something. No, it's just a different floor. Now the issue is because Rhodes is a scroll, he hasn't seen many horror movies. But the rest of the men, sir, yeah. tell him to start hunting. Which is why they split up. So people start traveling around the floor, looking in the different rooms, and they just start falling over. <laughs> 
Nick Fury, renowned for his tranquilizer darts. And the bodies get dragged into the rooms. I mean, personally, I would have dragged them into the room out of line of sight of the entire hospital and then zip tied and gagged them. But in this, she had a spare five minutes in the corridor because it's not as if anyone's actively checking the corridors or anything. But you never would have thought your last 20 minutes on Earth would be spent down there having a drink with me. Yeah, the only reason I can see to do that is because it'd be so horrific, it would make it feel like a lifetime. He starts pointing out Fury's tremors and about how they're going to get worse until eventually he pops his clogs. Fury, tell me you got a backup plan. He even knows that Fury always has a plan, or at least the good Fury. In this series, I can understand why he thinks he might just be as trash as he looks. But given that he's screaming at him, tell me you've got a plan, you'd think he'd be very cautious right now, wouldn't you? Also, as a scroll, should maybe be aware that people aren't necessarily what they look like. This is literally a scroll who doesn't check people are who they say they are. Are you telling me that an entire species based around shapeshifting doesn't have like cultural standards in order to ensure authenticity of the person? Some kind of method of detection. Scrolls? Nah, I'm just gonna assume, mate. So then, because this entire show is created by imbeciles, they just start talking past each other. Your little Avengers on standby. What about that invisible cloak and shield? <laughs> you know, do you have any technology to protect yourself, Fury? Do you have a plan? You do busy playing dress up, using my skin like a costume. What? Do you have a backup plan, Fury? Maybe a radiation shield? You're using my skin as a costume! Fury, are you going to engage in any spycraft? You can shape change! <laughs> You're a scroll! It's very deep, very complex. A costume, Fury. Do you not recognize this skin? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't care. No, 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 no. I've just realized. Is Fury trying to imply he is a younger version of Fury? Can Fury not remember what he looked like when he was younger? And also, now can scrolls not only impersonate you, but they can de-age you. What? But then Gravik just starts to whine and cry and complain. Seriously, you can tell he's come from the Barbie movie. I was half expecting him to tell me he didn't have any junk. This was the first human I killed. Well, you killed this entire show. And you know why I killed him? I killed him because you told me to. That's basically the rest of the scene. Oh, you so horrific, Fury. Oh, you told me to do some missions for you. This is why I said the role in Barbie was perfect for him, because he does nothing but cry like a little girl, and we're supposed to find this intimidating. Oh, wow. You don't even remember. It's more that I don't care, to be honest, to be quite frank with you. And he just starts nagging Fury like they've been married for the last 50 years. Oh, you betrayed me. Oh, I did everything for you. Give everything to impress my hero. You know, the one who promised us a home. Oh, you broke a promise for me and now I'm going to destroy the world. Wiping out 8 billion people because someone broke a promise to a nine-year-old is not a good story. Just for future reference, you really want to stop reminding people that that is your plot. By the way. He had a wife! He had children! Yeah, alright, maybe he was a bit misguided. Oh, you know, only wanted to destroy the world, wipe out 8 billion people, little bit misguided, probably should have just left him there though, should we? You know, a bit misguided, enough to get noticed by shields and have Fury take you out. Doesn't explain what he did, but I have a feeling it wouldn't come under a bit misguided by most people's definitions. And why would we ever listen to the villain who wants to wipe out 8 billion people? But I killed him because of you! And then you decided to kill 8 billion people people because you're a lunatic. Why is the evil villain whining about how hard done by he is? I'd fire you into the sun. And everyone I killed took a little piece out of my heart. I know that feeling, mate, believe me. You're complaining about killing people, you're boring me to death. No one wants to see the villain whine. They just want to see them get what they deserve. You're not the only one. No, I am the only one brave enough to admit it. It takes a lot of bravery to cry like a little girl. Oh, look at me my masculinity. I'll give him one thing though, every single pause face he has does summarize this entire scene. And then we have this bit which isn't noticeable for the script, it is noticeable about how badly dubbed it is. I mean yeah I get it, sometimes your mic messes up and you have to re-record the audio afterwards, or you write in a different line. Maybe don't put it on screen though, so it's not obvious. I mean watch this, see if you think it lines up with what you're saying. He was weak, he turned the war people into a band of beggars. Only when he hits a band of beggars does his mouth start saying the same words. In fact, I'm pretty sure as he's walking across the room, his mouth isn't moving. Because he was weak. He's just walking across the room, he's not saying anything. He turned to war people. Especially when you've got someone who uses hand movements, you emphasize certain words. And in this, he'd go, war people is like war people. He turned to war people. Oh, can you tell how much I hate this scene? I'm picking up on the smallest stuff just to desperately try not to think about the actual script. What band of beggars and what I'm supposed to emulate that? Yes, please. But he does say you turned the war people into a band of beggars, which maybe I'm crazy. It would explain why 
every single person in the entire universe hates you. Because you're a war people with a habit of wiping out entire species. Why should anybody want you? If you can't be nice, let's just introduce them to the Kree, shall we? I'm supposed to be like Talos! I mean, at least Talos was sufferable. Even his car scene where he's calling Fury crap wasn't as annoying as this. You put us out to work for you, and when you were done with us, you threw us away. That's because he couldn't stand being in your presence. First, I'm gonna kill you. Please. Oh, please. Just put him out of his misery. And then, I'm gonna take a flamethrower to humanity! And we're supposed to feel sympathy for you. Why? Why is the guy saying he's going to flamethrower humanity crying at me? I'm pretty sure the emotion you're going for in this scene is sympathy. Whereas the only thing anybody is thinking is, why is Fury not doing something? Please shut him up. So I am absolutely clear about this, Fury. You look at me. Look at me! You kindly piss off, please! This might be the most annoying scene of a TV series. The villain shouldn't be whining when everything he's talking about is his own fault. You did this! All the bombs and the blackouts and the massacre- You're just lying to him. We've seen the television episode. We know that Gravik did it. Why are you gaslighting Fury? Why are you gaslighting the audience? Who wrote this script and why are they allowed access to a pen? Did you take a stupid pill with your breakfast this morning? I have no idea how you get a job in Hollywood, but whatever that process is, this proves it's a failure. That is all you! No, it's you. You're the one doing it. You're the one responsible. It's your choice. They were condemned to die the day I realized you weren't a man of your word. Oh, you broke a promise to a nine-year-old and now everything's your fault. We've established you're a warlike species that wipes out every single thing they ever meet. And then you're surprised he can't find you a planet. You went out, your own people went out and looked for a planet and couldn't find one because everybody despises you. For very good reason. This is your problem. Your fault and you decided to have him whine and cry at somebody else blaming somebody else when he's just lying there like a defeated, useless waste of space in an attempt to make us have sympathy for Gravik. This is the responsibility and fault of every Skrull because they are the warlike species which have managed to piss off the universe. The entire universe. At this point, the only planet he could find you would be in a different dimension. You really should have kept... You promise! Oh, stop moaning like a child! Breaking a promise to a nine-year-old is not reason to destroy the Earth. I don't know why I have to tell Disney this. It does not make a plot. You're, you're, you're right. Oh, shut your face, Fury. You go down that path, I'm gonna join him and start whining at you as well. Let's just blame Velma, Rings of Power, and Wheel of Time on Fury while we're here. It's all your fault! You broke a promise! You, you, you're right, I, I failed you. This script failed everybody, Fury. The only people that have been failed in this scenario are the audience, because Samuel Jackson didn't read the script before he signed up to this thing. And if he did, I don't know why he took it. Well, I do know. Money, 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 money. Who cares if it destroys your entire character? You got paid. I I knew the only way for me to keep my end of the bargain was to build your home here. Why didn't you do it? He did, you absolute mouth breather. What do you think you're standing on? Earth. What do you want him to do for you? Buy you a house? You even have free accommodation right here. You're doing fine and complaining about how hard done by you are. Ah, oh, Fury, I wanted free everything. Because it's easier. Dude, you provided him a home. He's on your planet. What more does he want? To save the lives of eight billion people. What do you mean? What do you mean it's easier to save the light? There is one million of them on your planet and they're taking it over. I don't know how much more accommodating you want to be. Than it is to change their hearts and minds. That's because they're evil scum fury. Rocket meets sun. Even for Nick Fury. Even for Nick Fury. The useless old waste of space who can't do anything. And even before that, the scrolls are responsible for his entire career. Yep, even that guy. But then it gets worse because we start to go back into the Marvel timeline to destroy that as well. Like we did with the scrolls, saying they're responsible for Fury's entire career. You know, the last thing I felt before I flicked off. What's that? Relief. Piss off! Piss off! Do I need to look that moment up? I can't believe this. Oh no. Mother. Oh no. Does this sound like somebody who was relieved to be going? Oh no. Really? If you were relieved, wouldn't you be like, yes, or finally? Oh no means this is a bad thing. But no, let's rewrite history to make him pathetic. Relief that I didn't have to fight anymore. Don't make me tap the video. If you're going to talk about a previous moment in a movie, at least watch it. That's the bare minimum. That I finally had a way out. Is now a good time to remind everybody that the writer of this show wants more money. Oh no. 
And all of the actors are like, why you wouldn't have quality entertainment like this without us? Maybe make some of it first and then get back to me, eh? Well then. So then we get a bit of a hybrid scene. We get Fury's voiceover in the conversation while we're at the hospital. I wasn't brave. Yeah, Fury. Fury's not brave. Fury's nothing. It's just the scrolls did everything for me. Fury was actually a really scared little coward his entire life who breaks promises to nine-year-olds and that's why he destroyed the Earth for some reason. Do you know why? I came back to Earth. Because this is 2023. Misandry is the motivating principle of Hollywood and you wanted to replace a character that everybody liked with somebody who has fallopian tubes so you can make a different spin-off series. Just off the top of my head. Oh, do you mean the money? Sorry. The m money and greed. But he goes, no, I came back for you because you were the young Skrull on my team. And just, he doesn't care about anything else. He doesn't care about saving the world. He doesn't care about all of humanity. No, no. I came back to save somebody trying to murder the universe. I felt responsible for you. I don't know why, he's an evil maniac. At this point, you wouldn't want to piss on him if he was on fire. But with Rhodes panicking, they managed to get Citadel into a lift, and Fury's just still whining about, I failed your people! And then it gets really stupid. Oh yeah, you've seen nothing yet. Decided to give you what you want. Have you considered pissing off? I mean, I think I've said that before, but I really mean it now. Just so everyone's aware, Fury's reason for not bringing in the Avengers is, I don't want the Skrulls to have their powers. Then he said, I've got to save the world on my own. We can't have aliens coming down and saving us all the time. Bear that in mind. Is that what I think it is? The final nail in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yes. Yes, I think it might be. Or it would be if anyone was watching the show, anyway. Carol Danvers DNA. Well, he didn't just want Carol Danvers, he wanted everybody's. This is Indiana Jones all over again. I want to go back to Rome and die, because I'm a useless waste of space. Why didn't you bring him the Avengers? He wanted all of the Avengers. Along with the Avengers. Wait, why didn't you say that first? Have you brought the DNA of the Avengers? Carol Danvers. He didn't bring the Avengers then. And the Avengers. <laughs> why are we announcing her name as if it's special? But he offers it to him. In exchange for what? Like he's holding it out to you and he's this quivering wreck. Just take it from him. Take your powers, go to some other planet, wipe out some other species. I mean, that actually, I could, I could see Fury doing that. Look, I don't care if you wipe out another planet, but I'm here to protect Earth. Okay, I get it, but maybe making him the most powerful person in the universe isn't the way you do that. Maybe you just kick him off your planet and fire him into the sun. It's, it's an option. But then he sums up what I think everybody feels about Hollywood and Marvel at this point. Just leave Earth the hell alone and leave it now. Stop destroying the IPs and the characters. I think the radiation's eating your brains, mate. Can't disagree with you there. It's just when it comes to the writers, I don't think they had any to begin with. Because Fury's still walking towards him, holding it. Why, why don't you just take this off me? Take it off me! At no point is Gravik suspicious, nor does anybody check if anybody's a scroll. In fact, throughout this entire series, the only time anybody has ever checked if anybody is a scroll is when they already knew they were a scroll and therefore didn't need to test them in the first place. This entire show is backwards. This show required your most intelligent writers, and you just went and got the opposite. So Gravik just takes it off him, gently and slowly. Fury doesn't smash it, doesn't drop it, doesn't even move to pull his hand back. He's just giving it to him, making him the most powerful person in the universe. Gravik is not suspicious. So then Fury collapses on the floor, and this pose basically summarizes Fury for this entire series. Getting down on his knees, submissive, subservient, making it lovely. I think the radiation's eating your brains, mate. Upstairs now in the far more secure hospital floor, which looks exactly like the one downstairs. I'm still not sure why we moved him upstairs as if that was going to change anything. Put him in a bunker. But while they're there, Citadel gets a gun off one of his security guards. We cut over to a random army vehicle who's getting classified documents, and they get driven off. I've already watched this episode once. I can't even remember what these are or what they're for. I'm not actually sure if they're mentioned ever again. I don't know why this scene's in the show. But Gravik puts the DNA into the microwave and then up pops a list of names of all of the different DNA sequences. How? So either it already had their DNA so it could actually recognize it, in which case you didn't need it in the first place, or somehow the Avengers DNA is hard-coded with their own names. I mean, look, nature's good, but it's not that good. Oh no, you've got abomination in here. If S.H.I.E.L.D. turns up, I'm leaving. Even Korg, the most useless, annoying, and pathetic character in the entire Marvel Universe. Well, what you least expect that you're going to want to see is Thor going through a midlife crisis. But as it keeps going through all the names, and I mean, all the names. It's pure. 
dude, it's not snow. What are you gonna do next? Rub Captain Marvel's DNA on your gums? You really wanna die. He spent what felt like a lifetime crying at you. You're a bit slow on the pickup, mate, aren't you? But then in the hospital, just as Rhodes picks a room to move him in. Coincidentally, she's hiding in it. Yeah, she predicted his move at every turn, even knowing the exact room he was going to move him into on a different floor. She is a smart one, isn't she? Totally better than Fury and could absolutely replace him in a spin-off series. No checking behind the doors. You really are a scrub. Are you going to test it? Never stopped you before. She's now shown twice how easy it is to reveal a scroll. She forgets all of that. Suddenly, from this moment on, she has absolutely no idea how to prove somebody's a scroll, despite doing it in the same series multiple times. But then the plot gets even more stupid. Obviously, Gravik wants to transform with all the DNA, but for some reason, we leave Fury in the same machine. We still haven't checked if it's actually Fury. We are a scroll, so I'm assuming you know other people can impersonate other people, right? But either way, Gravik just starts staring at him as the machine transforms him into the ultimate super scroll with the power of all of the Avengers, Captain Marvel, and a load of random people. He just leaves Fury in the same machine. That might, be the that might be the most stupid plot point of the series, and it's got a strong competition. If you want to kill Fury, like, put him out of the machine, snap his neck. Don't leave him in the invincibility machine that gives you superpowers. But now Citadel has got a gun on her because he thinks that she's taken captive one of his own subjects. Nobody checks if anybody is a scroll. But then as the ultimate scroll appears, he smacks Fiori across the ground. But just as he's about to do his final hit. Oh, never saw that coming. I think the radiation's eaten your brains, mate. This is so hype, what's gone on here? Oh, it looks like he can transform into the Hulk. The music's really trying to make this beer. Oh, it's amazing! We finally decided to save the world! I mean, our plan was one of the most stupid ever created throughout the entire course of human history. But it's worked magically because we wrote it that way. It's a super-powered fury! You. You. I don't know if you're detecting the fact that I might be slightly annoyed by this. None of it makes any sense. Fury didn't want to bring the Avengers in because, oh, then my scrolls might get superpowers. Then at the end of the last episode, which was just before this, he said, I'm not going to bring the Avengers back because I have to do this. We can't rely on the aliens to save us all the time. He then got one of the aliens to save the world by giving them superpowers. One of the things with this show is you better have a good reason not to bring the Avengers back. And he's like, don't worry, I've got multiple ones. No, he doesn't, because he breaks them all. Oh, look, Fury's turned up in the hospital. The real Fury. Yeah, it was all some big twist. I can be in two places at once and just hope that everything works for some reason. Gravik had just snapped his neck in the power plant. All would have been over and we would have destroyed the universe. If he hadn't left him in the machine when it turned, he would have destroyed the universe. Your plan sucked, Fury. All we have to do is convince him he's a scroll and he will call off the nuclear attack. Why, why didn't you just prove he's a scroll then? I'm not here to hurt you, sir. Just prove that the guy next to him is a scroll. Prove he's a scroll. We know you can do it. We've seen it in earlier episodes. She knows she can do it because she's the one that did it in earlier episodes. You killed my mother, my father. Okay, love, let's not start listing his positives right now, shall we? We've gone through enough. Yes, he's a villain, but he's got an upside stories. But what happens now is the two ultimate scrolls, I don't know what the name's supposed to be, fight. We had super scrolls, so unless these are gonna be like super, super scrolls. You're flailing. You're weak. You don't even know if you're gonna beat him yet, love, with your stumpy little arms. <laughs> Hang on, is her head on somebody else's body? All the proportions seem off. But we then jump into a fight. He lobs a car at her, but she vanishes into a hero pose. So we start using everyone's different abilities. She's seen Terminator 2 and thought this looked cool. I'm sorry, what did that pavement do to you, love? The concrete's just sitting there, leave it alone. But they go through, slashing each other, spinning around, your typical fight. Until eventually, she stabs him through the chest. Back in the hospital now, with the least tense moment of anybody's life, the only thing that should be going through the audience's head is, why don't you just prove he's a scroll? He is a scroll. Why don't you just show him that then, rather than telling him with your words? Call off the strike, you're going to kill the man he's replicating along with some of the world's greatest minds. Yeah, apparently when they kidnapped all of the world leaders, they hid them underneath the same power plant. And so if they strike the power plant, all the leaders die. It's too late to try and get me on his side now. Please tell me this isn't true. Are you listening to this insanity? Of course it isn't true. Proof is a scroll. We already know if we just give him a flesh wound, he will turn into a scroll. What are we doing? Rhodes himself isn't armed. The 
only one you have to worry about is that guy, and he's in a bed. Just pull him into the room behind you and do it there. You're supposed to be top secret agents. Why can't you think of this? Meanwhile, back in the fight, Gravix using telekinesis, and she's having a nice little sleep. I mean, that's got a sting. Just stay the course. Prove he's a scroll. All right, and all our enemies will be gone. Prove he's a scroll. And while all this is going on, a missile silo is opening up, getting ready to cause World War III. It's not as if this isn't time sensitive. We don't have all the time in the world to convince him. Prove he's a scroll. Listen to me. Sir, you're looking at your enemy. He would be looking at him. He just proved he's a scroll. This is even more annoying the second time around. You wait another minute, he and the rebel scrolls will win. So why are you allowing him to have that minute? Explain. Back Back to the fight now, Daenerys has realized I have other powers. And so we turn into Captain Marvel, spin up into the air, and now we have two Brie Larsons, or three, I suppose, because the original still exists. So we fight in the air as we're plummeting to Earth, and she starts to lose oxygen as he's just brute forcing her. Ah, it seems like she knows her powers better than he does, because after all, he's just got dangly bits. Of course he was going to use brute strength, but her? She uses wit and intellect to outsmart her opponents. As if there's one thing we've learned in this show, it's that the people in it are incredibly intelligent. So she reaches up with all the speed of a slog. No, seriously, he could have stopped her at any point. Just watch this. Do you want to grab a hand at any point there, mate? But he didn't, and so now he's unconscious. Plummets to Earth while she flies, and leaves a bit of a dent in the concrete. Then we get this really strange shot, like it's out of Thor, Love and Thunder. You know, the one with the floating head that everyone took the piss out of? That's what this reminds me of. <laughs> 212 million, folks. I'm not even sure she's in proportion. Is it just me, or does she have, like, a massive head and a really long neck? I mean, maybe it's just camera distortion, because her legs will be closer to the camera. But they look really long, then she's got a tiny body with a massive head and neck. <laughs> Her head and neck are about the same size as her torso. That's not normal. She's got superpowers and can transform. It's not meant to be normal. Yeah, I'm sure it was intentional. Price secrets and what have you got to lose? What do you have to lose? You know how to turn him into a scroll. Why are we all just waiting and hesitating like nobody knows the solution to this? It's not a big problem. So then like, well, why don't you just delay the strike? He's doing his best overacting to try and make the scene tense when everybody in it is a moron. And he's like, you've got nothing to lose. All you have to do is not attack him right now. Do it tomorrow. And after we've proved this guy's a scroll. And if he's wrong, you can send me to prison. I don't want to do that anyway, just for making this show, to be honest. I don't know what law you've broken, but something this bad has got to break something. So then, Captain Marvel 2 starts flying down at him while he's blasting lasers at her in the air. Superhero pose. He's looking a bit worse for wear at this point. But don't worry, through the power of fallopian tubes. Probably gonna sting. I don't know why he has lost the ability to fight. At no point throughout the series have we established that she's a better fighter than he is. She joined him, so presumably, at best, He's her trainer. But that isn't going to stop us spinning a nonsensical story as she absolutely annihilates him and he can't even fight back. To where she lifts him up. Just like your father. To be fair, her father's dead. There's actually nothing like him. But then she annihilates him by a massive beam through his chest, thus proving that Fury has been wrong throughout the entire series. <laughs> he should have just brought the Avengers back because that's essentially what happened. They could have stopped him easily without giving him superpowers and risking the apocalypse of the universe. And it also means that Fury's done nothing in his own show. Fury could have not existed in this entire episode, same thing would have happened. And the director has no idea what happened in his own show. The thing I love about this show is that the story is less about Nick Fury vanquishing Gravik. Well, at least we got that bit right, because he didn't vanquish Gravik at all. It's more about Nick Fury reconciling with Gravik. Reconciling with Gravik. He had a laser beam through his chest, and Nick Fury didn't reconcile with Gravik. Nick Fury never saw him. Throughout the entire final episode, Nick Fury never even met him. All the stuff from the conversation before, pointless. Nick Fury never said any of it. It was just her making stuff up. What is this? And why don't you even know what's in your own show? Either way, he's dead and she's glowing. Back in the scene with zero tension, and we still haven't put Rhodes through some slight pain just to turn him back into a scroll. So Rhodes makes a grab for the gun because someone's got to do something at some point. Fury disarms Citadel, and as Rhodes goes to shoot Fury, Fury takes him out first. And obviously as he dies, he turns back into a scroll. Why didn't we do this half an hour ago? There was no tension in the scene because it all could have been solved with somebody's index finger. Because obviously the president sees him turn back into a scroll. He's like, oh, oh, he's a scroll. It's like, yeah, I don't know why they didn't show you that before. Jesus, somebody give me the phone. 
It was that simple, folks. How did she forget how to be a spy? She knew for the other five episodes, and then in this one, she's like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. So Citadel calls off the strike. Daenerys goes under the compound and starts freeing all of the kidnapped leaders. And then she finds Rhodes, turns off his machine, and starts to unhook his straps. Martin Freeman, though, she didn't give a crap about him. He's still tied up. <laughs> She literally walked past him and go, oh, God, free road. Sorry, mate. We don't care about you. You could stay there all day. I'd like to point out that Freeman got paid at least 9,000 for this. Those are the sag after rates for saying a few lines. Those poor, poor underpaid actors. I think he gets about four and a half grand a line, even on base rate. But he tries to stand up and he can't, even though everyone else is walking around. So we know he's been taken for a longer time than everyone else. They also really want you to know that, despite the fact they've shown you on the screen by everyone going, how long have you been here? Whoa, I know, right? You've been held hostage for a long time. We're gonna have to say it three times, folks, because our audience are idiots and they might not understand otherwise. We couldn't just show you the fact that his muscles is atrophied and let you do the work. My favourite was CBR's tweet, though, where it went, Secret Invasions finale strongly hints that Rhodey has been a scroll for a long time. I was like, oh, where did you get that strong hint from? Is it from the bit where they say, you've been gone for a long time? You've been held hostage for a long time. That's how subtle Secret Invasion is. This line counts as a strong hint. That's why CBR journalists get paid the big bucks. But they all leave the power plant, and Citadel is getting ready to do a speech to the people. He starts telling everybody that the scrolls are on Earth, a shape-shifting alien species, and they attacked me in my motorcade, trying to cause World War III and start the apocalypse. Authorization a bill that designates all off-world-born species enemy combatants. You kind of like, that's a little bit far, isn't it? I mean, the scrolls make sense. But like, the entire universe? The scrolls attack my motorcade, we better wipe out all life in the universe. Dude, that's just like Gravik wiping out the planet because it broke a promise to a nine-year-old. Could we at least have reasonable, believable actions in our TV series? Not this. No one would do this, you idiots. What was it R Rhodey said earlier in the episode? Did you take a stupid pill with your breakfast this morning, Admiral? We know who you are. No, they're scrolls, they're shapeshifters. You literally don't know who they are, that's the entire point. We know how to find you. Yeah, but to be fair, they knew how to find him when he was in the hospital. The better question is, are you going to remember that you know how to find them? And we will kill every last one of you. Based economy. At this point, that's just justice for the scrolls. They did want to wipe out 8 billion people on Earth. And then we're going to move on to the rest of the universe. But Fury decides to return to his wife. I'm sorry. Why? What for? For what? Exactly. Why should he be sorry? You're the scroll who betrayed him and tried to bring about the apocalypse and was going to shoot him in the face. Why is he apologizing? You're the traitorous little cow. Not being here. What? She tried to cause the apocalypse and shoot you in the face. These two issues are not the same level of difficulty. I could take care of myself. You always took care of him as well. Down the barrel of a gun. But she starts going, I know who I am when you're not here, but when you return and I have to wear this skin, I start wondering, would you love me if I was an ugly green alien creature? Would you love me if I was a green monster that wanted to wipe out the planet? I still think Fiori would dump her if she put on half a stone, but apparently- I'm here to ask you for one last chance. I don't know why. But he tells her he's leaving and he wants her to go with him, to which she refuses. Find a way to forgive me, you know where to find me. I still don't know what she's supposed to be forgiving. She tried to shoot you in the face and wipe out 8 billion people. I think most people would accept that as grounds for divorce. Tried to cause the apocalypse. All I'm saying is she wouldn't get custody. But Daenerys is walking down a road, a car drives up behind her, so she dodges into a side alley, running into Miss Peepshow. Unless you have an army crammed in the back of that car, I advise you to go back the way you came. You should listen to her. I've seen her burn down an entire city for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Oh, I haven't come for a fight. Nor did they, but a bell went off. Let's just hope you haven't set the alarm on your phone, otherwise you are screwed. With your special abilities, it would be a lopsided affair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know where this is going yet. You know where every Marvel show has taken the male hero that everyone likes and then replaced them? Because they're old, useless and decrepit and didn't really do anything in their entire career anyway. So now we can replace them with new people and make a spin-off series. I'm not even joking. She starts bribing her about your people need a leader. You're going to need resources to fight this war that, that Citadel has just started with your people. I'm like, what? She's going to be fighting a war? against humans when she has all of the superhero powers. Firstly, there's no way the humans could fight her. Secondly, why doesn't she just take her people to another planet? Why is she fighting for this one? And why are we helping her wipe out the Earth? My father entered into a deal like that. It didn't end so well. Yeah, but that's because your people are absolutely horrific and despised by the entire universe for very good reason. Yes, well, let's be sure not to repeat the mistakes of Talos and Fury. And 
oh yeah, I wouldn't want to repeat the mistakes of Talos and Fury. Because, you know, we're far better than those. You know what those are like, those emotional dangly bits. We'd never let that get in the way. Not emotion, no, we're logical. Leave love and friendship out of this. I'm hoping when it comes to love, she means Fury's wife and not Talos or Gravik. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure though. I will use you, you will use me. There's nothing that you could use her for because she wants to destroy Earth. She's at war with the humans. What are you doing? And together we'll make this planet safe for both our people. And have a spin-off series, all of our very own. Congratulations. Welcome to the new Nick Fury. So they go off together into a new future, unhindered by such pesky things as emotions, purely logical beings. And with four fallopian tubes between them, they are a force to be reckoned with. She's a shapeshifter, she can probably get more if she wants. But as Rings of Power showrunners would say, the plot comes full circle, like a ring. I think the radiation's eaten your brains, mate. And he arrives back where he started, ready to return to space. The president's in his car, talking to Fury. I was relieved that we made it out alive. Why? You're the only one who had any weapons. None of you were in any danger. Rhodes couldn't have done anything to you. What are you relieved about? I was relieved too, until I watched that hateful ass speech you made. Oh yeah, I wouldn't want to dislike the people who are bringing about the apocalypse and trying to wipe out 8 billion people. They're deserving of respect as they attempt to wipe out the entire human species. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, and they did this, by the way. I do find it funny that all the important leaders were in like these really sort of homemade machines, but then all the nobodies in a room have this advanced tech on them. Because <laughs> these are all the scrolls across the planet. All 1 million of them and everyone they've kidnapped. The lives that they've destroyed, the people that they've taken over. They are shapeshifters. They don't have to do this, they choose to do this voluntarily. They could shapeshift into anybody. They don't need to steal somebody's life, they could just make their own. But that's not what they are. They've destroyed one million people's lives at a minimum, and while this is going on, we've got Fury going, I can't believe you dislike him! When we make shows in Hollywood, can you please employ a human being to actually read it through so you can have, like, morals? You took a bad situation and made it worse. Fury has just said, yes, they are trying to kill 8 billion people. But you didn't need to attack them back. You didn't need to defend yourself. You didn't need to dish out justice to the people trying to bring about the apocalypse. What are you doing? That's real one-term president stuff. Oh, yeah, saving the world. Oh. One term. So then you get people that are being called vigilantes just going out and wiping out scrolls. And Fury's blaming him. You've caused a load of vigilante hit squadrons. Which are also apparently getting it wrong and killing some humans who aren't scrolls in the first place. However stupid you think this show is, no, they're worse. You don't need to kill someone to prove they're a scroll. You can just do it with a blood test. It would be incredibly easy to prove whether someone is or isn't. It also doesn't need to be permanent. You could just give them a flesh wound. Pain brings it out of them. There is no reason for the events that you're saying to actually happen. It's because you've forgotten that you can detect scrolls for some reason, despite showing it earlier in the series. Your universe has to live by the rules that you set for it. Fury's, oh, just let him leave in peace. Fury's just like, yeah, just leave him. You know, I'm sure they're going to try again, but that's fine. There's only one way this ends. The old Nick Fury would have known that. It's true. But this Fury is old, weak, useless, and already been replaced by a younger model. And she's had an upgrade, which might explain why now Fury's lost his dangly bits. They've either shriveled up or just been removed. If you truly care about the scrolls, get them off my planet and preferably put them on the surface of the sun. But just as Fury's about to leave, his worst half turns up. Fury tells her that there's great news. The Kree are open to peace talks with you. When I said contact the Kree, I never meant this. We need an alliance with the Kree. And he's like, this is why I need your help, because you're the best diplomat that they have. What? She was a spy sent specifically to worm her way into your life to influence your opinion and make you worse, which she did. You should have just gone, you're incredibly Machiavellian. Do you want to be a diplomat? You're the best diplomat the scrolls have ever had. Yes, I inherited that power after I gave myself 16 tubes. I'm no good with people. You are. You're no good with anything. We've proved that this series. Your entire career is a lie, and if you didn't exist in this entire finale, nothing would have changed. Everything would have happened the exact same way. I don't even know why this is your series. You didn't do anything in it. And we're better together. Oh, did he have to quote Nerdrotic about pineapple and pizza? Haven't I suffered enough? You had to bring up pineapple and pizza. Oh, well, at least I am. Yeah, because she isn't, you know. He's detrimental to her, but she improves him. It's, it's purely one way. He's essentially selfish. She's doing him a favor. Please. Oh, now he's begging. Fury, can you please piss off into outer space and never come back? Do us all a favor at this point. Come with me. Okay, I didn't think he was going to be that blunt about it. Maybe he just realizes he's going to be in space for a long time and he's not going to meet anyone else. You're the best I can do. Join me in this glowing room. I'll help you get started, but then I've got to get back. Where's the fun in that? 
So she decides to photosynthesize, and at this point, Fury should be getting jump scared. Seriously, it's that mirror scene all over again. <laughs> ah, is that, oh, I'll take it back, you can stay on Earth. Seeing your face is the reason why I need to go back into outer space to escape it. So we get an incredibly disturbing scene. This is the same argument the horse people make, and they leave together hopefully never to be seen again. I despised everything about this show. I don't know whether you can tell. Nothing made sense, the plot never made sense, Fury's gone back on every single reason he ever had for anything, the reasons for not bringing the Avengers were nonsense. I don't want to give them superpowers, he gave them superpowers. I don't want to rely on aliens and superheroes, so he relies on an alien to do it for him. Really, it just means I can't get any of those, because my budget's only 212 million, so I can't pay him. But this show was essentially Indiana Jones 5. We even had Fury saying he was glad he was dead at one point, and sad, old, decrepit, just wants to yeet himself off this mortal coil, all so he can get replaced by a younger fallopian tube. Congratulations, folks. You've made the story that everyone else has already made, and every single time it's trash. This show should have been right up my street, but it requires talented writers, which you clearly didn't have. It's supposed to be complicated with twists and turns, and it needs intelligent characters. None of these happened. Either everyone was an idiot, to the point where they forget things they knew about the scrolls earlier in the series. All because we need tension, and for that, we've got to make the people morons. Did you take a stupid pill with your breakfast this morning, Admiral? And it was all the worse, because before this, I had liked Nick Fury, and now I can't stand the character. And so, every time you show me he's in the Marvels, am I supposed to care? Because I've seen this, the one where you deliberately destroyed him. And so all I can say is, this episode absolutely deserved the 13% it got. It absolutely deserved being the currently lowest rated MCU episode ever. Because this show was never really well liked and got progressively worse to the point where it got absolutely annihilated in the reviews, and that's a good thing. I think we've all questioned at some point streaming series only being six episodes long, but in this case, for Secret Invasion, being six episodes long is the only positive thing I can say about the series. Well, those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.